Hi, I'm Andy Weinberg with Miller Wilders Motorsports. Today we're in Pahrump, Nevada at Battleborn Engineering with Robbie Woods. Robbie, tell us a little bit about your business. Well, we, uh, we build a little bit of everything high quality for the off-road market. Um, we've spent the last 10 years racing off-road trucks professionally and have kind of shifted gears and put my helmet on hold for, uh, I don't know, maybe some extended period of time so we can bring some of our resources to, uh, to potential consumers. You know, we build, we build trophy trucks, we build short course race trucks, and we also build quite a bit of parts for the, uh, the ever-growing and expanding side-by-side -side market. So today we're building our center exit exhaust system. It's out of 304 stainless steel. Uh, the can is actually 80 thousandths, 14 gauge. A lot of the internals are made out of 16 gauge right in the 063 range and so we're going to go through a couple of different temperature settings and techniques to the spot welds and the edge welds and the inside fillet welds. Um, you know one of the beauties of the Miller Dynasty is it offers a lot of tunability and we kind of dial it into the specific type of joint that we're doing. What are some of the tricks with welding stainless? I mean do you put any special components on the TIG torch to help with gas coverage? Yeah, uh, it, it's just very sensitive to being clean and being shielded. In a perfect environment, we would weld it inside of a, a chamber, but um, we obviously don't have one. And for the, for the piece and, and the price range that we sell it in, um, it doesn't justify being built to that degree. So we just use a, a standard inch and a half diameter gas lens. You know, the biggest amount of coverage you can get um, typically produces the best weld when it comes to stainless. It's got to have excellent fit up um, and it has to be just extremely surgical clean you know any any dirt grime you know anything other than just beautiful polished clean stainless doesn't weld very well and i love the design of your muffler here the way you have it shaped and and the, the way the internal baffles are actually plug welded first to keep the rigidity of the muffler in place while you weld it otherwise when welding stainless usually you would want to skip around some on this type of weld mint to keep the warpage down yeah, absolutely. We've noticed on some of the other stainless steel products that we've built that it is a very sensitive material. Um, heat input typically results in a lot of waves and dents and pulling. And, uh, you know, on a different side of things, not just the welding, but the design, uh, if you can ever incorporate flanges or square edges or something that you can attach to, um, that typically will build you a better product at the end of the day. Um, we have baffles within the muffler, you'll see. Um, that have spot welds basically on every surface. So there's not really any length of can longer than two inches that doesn't touch something on all four sides. So um, lots of revisions and a lot of uh, product development, but we finally have something that, that uh, is ideal. Excellent. Well, let's get started welding this piece with the Dynasty 350 and the Miller Weldcraft W280 TIG Torch. So if you notice, if you look at my Dynasty right now, it's set on 130 amps. Typically when we build these mufflers, we weld them on two different settings. We have an edge weld heat, and it's in that 125 to 140 amp range. Um, and then we weld the spot welds and some of the inside fillets around 175 amps. Um, a lot of the experienced welders obviously could pride themselves in leaving the machine up uh, and just doing the majority of the work with your foot. Uh, and sometimes I choose to do that, but uh, stainless steel is so temperamental and uh, you know why not take advantage of the fact that the machine is so tunable. When you're welding a part like this muffler you're gonna have outside fillet welds, inside fillet welds, spot welds, there's a whole bunch of different shapes and angles and uh, one pulse setting doesn't really work for that so I like to use my foot um, but it definitely gives you the option to do that if you're gonna be doing a lot of production welding um, and doing the same thing over and over again uh, obviously the pulser is to help with warpage, but we've got a design that warpage really isn't much of a concern. So I'm going to start by doing the spot welds. We've already tacked together everything that we need to, so I'm going to turn the machine up. So if you notice when I strike an arc and, and do these plug welds, I'm typically trying to melt the internal material before I induce any rod. Um, I'd really like to get a hole almost burnt into the inside structure before I bond the outside to it. It's very important to get full penetration into the baffles because with all the heat induced into these mufflers and the vibration and harmonics, you need everything working in your favor to keep them together. So if you notice, I've propped the muffler up on a spacer and you may wonder why. Stainless steel inherently wants to walk when you strike an arc and the puddle gets fluid. 
but I would recommend using something with a small amount of hydrogen to prevent that. In a perfect world, when we're done welding this, all of the plug welds would be a perfect circular 3 8 diameter uh, beautiful plug weld, and that's not always the case. So just do everything you can um, to try to keep your work surface flat. So as you can see, now we're going to shift gears and get away from the plug welding because that's all completed, and now we're going to do some outside corner welds. If you were welding 80,000 stainless steel, you would typically weld at a range of around 75 to 115 amps. And you'll notice that my machine is turned up a lot higher at 175 amps, which is a lot for uh, 80,000 material. Um, most of the customers that buy this, sand dune users and, and, and people that want a very finished looking product, we do blend and finish all the corner welds on this. And so we weld it at a much higher amperage and add a lot of filler rod and move at a pretty fast pace. It gives us a bigger radius on the outside corner and uh, a little bit more material to start with before we blend it. Now that we've done all the outside corner welding and blending it for aesthetics, we're going to weld all the inside fillets. This is my favorite part because stainless steel, when it's in a clean environment, produces a beautiful weld. So now we've finished welding this muffler can with the Dynasty 350 and the W280 TIG torch. As you notice today, we did some plug or spot welding. Um, some outside edge welds, and also some internal fillets, kind of in that order. If you're building something similar out of sheet metal, it would always make sense to do the lowest amount of heat input first, try to get as much structure stored into the piece you're building, and then finish off with the fillet weld. For more information on the Dynasty 350 or the W280 TIG torch, check out MillerWelds.com. And for more information on Battleborn Engineering, follow us on Instagram at Battleborn Engineering, at Robbie Woods, or BattleborneEngineering.co.